All right, everyone, so today is a special video. Today is talking about mental disorders. A lot of people want me to talk about this in the comment section. So I thought, let's just go ahead and do it. Um, basically, 57.8 million adults, age 18 and older, uh, acquire a mental illness uh, or emotional disorder. And it says, uh, AMI varies by age and sex. 33.7% of younger adults age 18 and 25 have AMI compared to 15% of adults uh, age 15 and older. And AMI is any mental illness, serious mental illness, 14.1 million in the United States. And most of you either have some kind of disorder the ones that you don't definitely know somebody that has, or many people like I do, many people. And it is very debilitating. You see somebody out acting crazy, you just never really know what's going on. Your first thought anymore these days, they're on drugs. That may not necessarily be the case. Um, you know, man, this is a large, this is a large topic. I could drive to any city anywhere and within 10 minutes, you're going to see somebody on the street that you're thinking either you're on the crack or they're on, they have a mental problem or both. A lot of it becomes both. So the different disorders broken down, there's many different types of mental disorders. Anxiety disorder is one, and we're going to go into these one by one, uh, behavioral and emotional disorders in children. Uh, bipolar affective disorder, that's a pretty big one. Depression, and if you don't have a classified mental disorder, depression can sneak up on anybody. You know, a lot of these are derived from stress, but not all. Stress is a big factor of that, or even anxiety. Um, disassociation and disassociative disorders. I'm really tired today, so I'm like slurring my words, that's what I do. Um, Sort of put that out there. Eating disorders, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. Uh, I'm sure most of you worked somewhere before that you had a, a boss that would micromanage. I've seen that the most in that. Uh, usually guys with OCD or women with OCD will be a, a ultra micromanager. And it could be a parent, could be a boss, could be a cousin, could be anybody, could be a girlfriend. Um, paranoia. Post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, PTSD, a lot of you military guys come home with that, police officers, firefighters, people that see a bunch of ugly stuff, it affects them, but they may not notice it right away, and it kind of comes back to haunt you later on. Paranoia, uh, already said that, psychosis, and schizophrenia. And a lot of you may know or may have multiples of these at one time. And so anxiety, anxiety disorders are a group of mental illness disorders that include generalized anxiety disorders, social phobias, specific phobias, uh, claustrophobia, uh, agoraphobia, agoraphobia, I haven't heard most of these. Uh, panic disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic. That's what I said. A lot of this intertwines with each other. A lot of times you have one, you'll have many. Now, via my blood pressure videos I've already posted here, I fully think that I have an undiagnosed anxiety issue that's severely covered up. I think that's a lot of my not being able to relax to check blood pressure correctly. And I not be able to sleep. Uh, a lot of you tell me that it's hard for you to sleep at night. I have a very vivid memory of a lot of things, while at the same time, others I cannot remember hardly anything. Uh, but that all seems to revisit when I'm trying to sleep at night or trying to relax or trying to do anything, right? Uh, so the direction of this channel is I want to take my knowledge, my car knowledge, my vast car knowledge and research and that ability to research stuff to the fullest extent and direct it towards uh, health issues. We helped a lot of people out of the blood pressure situation already. I really want to keep doing that. I like seeing you guys comment that we helped you out a lot. Um, and it works out. I like doing these videos. 
I'm getting old, working on cars every day is not exactly good for me. And I uh, just trying to not do that every day, all right? Uh, next one is behavioral and emotional disorders in children. Uh, the opposite, oppositional defiant disorder. No, I'm not gonna do that, right? Who's heard your kids say that? Or any kids say that? Everybody. Uh, no matter what you say, and you see adults do that same thing too. If you say anything that's correct, don't do this, do that, you know, they'll do the opposite. That's a thing. I won't say any more about it. That's a real thing. Uh, conduct disorder. So you're just being wild and crazy. You won't listen to anything of reason from superiors. Attention deficit disorder, ADHD. So you cannot concentrate on stuff. Cannot focus on one thing. Can't sit still. Um, we all know adults and children both have that, right? You know somebody that just, you're like, man, they cannot sit still one second. It could be a form of ADHD. Maybe it's caffeine. Maybe it's the crack. Who knows, right? I'm joking about that last part. Maybe. Bipolar affective disorder. This is probably the most common one, the bipolar, the to snap and go off on a tirade. Uh, you have the nice version of that person and the angry version of that person. Uh, this is a type of mood disorder previously referred to as manic depressive. Person with a bipolar disorder experiences episodes of mania, elation, and depression all at the same time. The person may or may not experience psychotic symptoms. The exact cause unknown, a genetic predisp predisposition has already been established. Uh, environmental stressors can also trigger. So basically, this is a genetic trait. This is an inherited genetic genetic issue, or it could be essentially your brain's missing a chemical or missing a, a part that makes it function correctly. And they put you on medicine for these. Usually those are very much so a sedative. Um, and there's all kinds of anxiety and and bipolar medication, uh, not on this list. People are also classed with anger issues. I see that a lot. That's a common thing. Uncontrollable anger and rage. Um, you know, it's a lot of you ladies and gentlemen probably saw that going through school. You saw, you always need somebody that was just totally just nutso, right? Just be nice one minute and just like a different person the next. That's what this is. And it could be a lot of stuff, but that's probably what this is. Um, Depression. Depression can hit any of us at any time. It's a very stressful world. The price of stuff is extremely expensive. It is hard to make money this very minute uh, in the world. You really got to put some effort forward to do that. Uh, a lot of people are, are barely making it by right now. The income to outcome ratio is not good. And so... Depression is on the rise in tremendous amounts. And I'm going to pause the depression. I want you all to be very careful with this. We have a mental illness problem. We also have a doctor problem. And what I mean by that, if you go to any doctor at any point in time and say you're depressed, they're going to slap some meds on you and it's going to change your life forever. A lot of people may not need those meds, but that's first right off the hit, the medicines come out. Right, and we had the same problem with opioids, and still do. You go to the doctor and say this hurts or that hurts. They ask you, okay, from one to ten, how bad does it hurt? And if you rank pretty high on the list of hurt, they're going to give you some kind of painkiller or something. Right? I'm saying if you have a mental issue, any of these issues, whether mild or wild, make sure you exercise all your options before you get on a medicine. That stuff is kind of a point of return for a lot of those. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. Um, make sure your caffeine, it, your caffeine intake is not crazy. Make sure it's not just a severe stress problem at your job or at school. Uh, there's a lot of things to go over before you just jump on meds. That's for damn sure. Most of those meds also do not work well. Um, a lot of people with these issues, and they're often on different meds their whole entire life. Um, so take it for what you will, um, disassociation and disassociative disorders. 
as a mental illness where a person disconnects from their thoughts, feelings, and memories or sense of identity uh, includes amnesia and dissociative identity disorder. I can barely say it. I'm tired, like I said. Um, I have not seen too much of that one. That's just basically going out of your mind and going on a tirade and don't remember anything um, about it. I mean, it seems like that's kind of working towards that. OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. I know a lot of people have this. Uh, depends on the severity of it. This is not necessarily a, a crippling disorder. It can be severe enough at times to be that. I see a lot of this OCD stuff. People that are not very active, it seems like that flares up a lot. I have several friends that have this and they tell me, Nathan, if I keep myself busy, that is not, this is not a problem. It's when you sit idle and your brain starts going off and thinking everything has to be perfect. I've worked with people with this situation before. These are some of the hardest people to work with if this is severe. And uh, because it depends on what you're doing. If you're in a service type job where you have to go out to businesses and your hands on working on something, no matter what it is, OCD will kill you for that because it won't let you get the job done quickly and efficiently. You'll spend a whole day doing a small job. And then I've seen this before with fellow employees or I could go do basically what they could do. What takes them all day to do takes me 10 minutes to do. Um, so if you're an employer and you're looking to hire somebody and somebody has OCD, I'd be very, I'd be a little leery of that. Depends on what business you're in. Obviously some jobs doesn't make any difference, but if you're in a time-based business, somebody that's OCD is not who you want to hire. And that's going to piss a lot of you off. But I've seen that firsthand actually several times. Uh, that's only a severe version of it though. If you have a mild case of it, it could actually help you. Uh, by paying very close attention to exactly what's what and you're doing stuff correctly, too much of that can make it where you just don't get anything done. You spend all day obsessing over some tiny little uh, thing that doesn't make any difference to anybody. Paranoia. Uh, a lot of people you see with this, you know, the government's after me. Schizophrenia and paranoia kind of merge a little bit. Uh, the government's after me, somebody's watching me, they tap my phone, they tap my, how many times have you heard that? From family or friends. They tap my phone, somebody's on my computer, um, on and on and on. They're, somebody's watching me, somebody's got a camera in my house. If you're literally legit thinking somebody has a camera in your house or somebody has tagged you, pull your phone out, open your Bluetooth settings and search for stuff. I mean, if you have a legit concern about that, that's the best thing you can do right there. If you call the cops, that's what they're going to do. If you see a a device that doesn't belong in your Bluetooth. It seems to be in your house or your car. You may have a legitimate concern at that point in time, but there's, I know a lot of people with that, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people. And post-traumatic stress disorder. We're gonna jump right in the next one, uh, PTSD. As I was saying before, a lot of military firefighters, uh, this is not something you're born with, obviously. This is something traumatic happened to you. Um, you know, this could be any kind of emergency personnel. You could work a regular job and something happened to you that was really embarrassing and that keeps coming back and haunting you. You could see a car wreck where somebody gets hurt or killed. Literally anything could spawn that. A lot of people don't understand they have that and they try to go through life with the, these vivid flashbacks and this inability to sleep without thinking about that. Uh, I probably had that from BMWs, let's be honest here. But uh, anyhow, psychosis. People affected by psychosis can experience delusions, hallucinations, and confusing thinking. Uh, can occur a number of mental illnesses, including drug-induced psychosis, schizophrenia, and mood disorders. Uh, also, let me pause right here. Almost all of these, if you're on drugs, or you drink extremely heavy, that could be caused in a lot of this stuff you're having this too. If you have these problems, look at what's going on in your life. First, what can be causing this in my life? Are you in an ugly marriage where it's just making you just go totally mental? 
Um, he's, yeah, I don't know. I be careful what I say I'm on YouTube. I have scenarios, old man scenarios, but I gotta be careful what I say I'm on YouTube, right? Um, anyhow, schizophrenia is another one. This a complex uh, psychotic disorder characterized by disruptions to thinking, emotions, distorted perception of reality, bending reality. I've had several friends with schizophrenia, or a combination of a lot of stuff, and we're back to that. You know, government's after me, this is after me, that's after me. And coming to conclusions that don't make any sense for a normal person. And when you hear somebody with schizophrenia talking, you can pick them out right away. There's no hiding that. You're not going to hide that. And a lot of people, if they have these issues, any number of these issues, hiding that is not really a thing to somebody that does not have that. Like, it'll pick you up in a second. Just like if you're on drugs and you think nobody knows but you. Let me tell you something everybody knows, including you. Just the way it is. You think you could go drink a 12-pack of beer and nobody's really going to notice. It's not the way it is. We saw a, a video here. It's been, probably been two or three years ago. They did a video on cocaine. And it was kind of hilarious because it was a controlled video. Forgot who put it on. And they had one person that they gave cocaine in a controlled environment. One of them was on alcohol. I forgot what the other ones were. But this person that was on cocaine thought in their mind they were doing all this stuff. And doing all these things, all these tasks. And in reality, they were doing stuff, but they were messing everything up. And it's the same if you... I'm not a drinker, but if you go drink a bunch of alcohol and go try to do something. Let's say you break your, your four-wheeler, Right? You go try to fix that four-wheeler. I've heard this from several people that drank. And you might think you're doing a good job, but you're actually breaking stuff and you're making it worse. Your crisp ability to think goes away under the influence of drugs or alcohol. And I sound like a high school guidance teacher, guidance counselor on this. I'm just saying, before you go take any medicine for any of this stuff, make sure there's not something else affecting you causing this. Otherwise, you get on medicine you don't really need. And especially if you have, uh, as I said, the depression issues, uh, that could spring on you anytime. It could also go away as fast as it springs on. It may be something in your life causing those issues. As a general video today, this is all I could do. We'll break these down maybe one by one later on. But hopefully this helps some of you out. Stay tuned for more videos. We're trying to cover multiple topics. Thank you all for watching the videos. The views have been really good. Thank you all again. Have a good day.